Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. We got some breaking news that Marcellus is excited about, mm -hmm. and it's right here in L.A. Reports say that the Clippers are hiring Ty Lu to be their next head coach. He was, an, he was an assistant under Doc Rivers, who was let go by the team in September. Lou led the Cavs to a title with LeBron back in 2016. Chauncey Billups is also expected to be Ty Lue's top assistant. So, Marcellus, I know you giddy, bro. I heard you during the commercial break. Uh, but do you like Ty Lue as the next head coach for the Clippers? Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Uh, yes, all for it. You know why? Why? There's some parallels that I really need to highlight. You kind of sped through them, and I need to slow you down. Slow me down, big bro. Slow me down. I'm not going to go too long on this lap because my enthusiasm will take over. Um, <laughs> Ty Lue won a championship where? Cleveland. Absolutely. Cleveland. Have they won a championship before Ty Lue helped them win that championship? Absolutely not. Never in their history. Have the Los Angeles Clippers ever won a championship? No. Ty Lue, I like that. The fact that you found... And don't give me this up. He had LeBron. I said nothing. Oh, I said you know nothing. what? I'm going to beat nothing. that up, too, because I said he nothing. had LeBron. And you know who else is deemed now a great coach in Eric Spolster? Had LeBron for four years and won two titles with mm -hmm. LeBron. But we know that that's a great situation. Pat Riley and Eric Spolster. Mm -hmm. So now you give Ty Lue him, same LeBron. They go to three straight finals. Mm -hmm. And they win one of them. And one, I mean, that one final that they won was an unbelievable, impossible comeback against the 73-win Warriors team. So he's seen the fire and been able to walk through it. But then you look up, and the next year he starts slow, 0-6. Mm -hmm. Fired. And there his reputation goes in terms of, is he really a good coach or not? Mm -hmm. But I always want to keep that comp of Eric Spolster right there and the comp of the fact that he was there in Cleveland when they finally got <clears throat> over the hump. Those are the same circumstances we're facing right now. You got a top player, maybe the best player in the game, two-way player, oh, certainly. No, no, no. <laughs> I hate you. And now I all you got to do is get this franchise over the hump. I hate this man. Look, you hate me because my hindsight is 2020. Oh, excuse me, I had LASIK. It's 25. <laughs> I have eagle vision. Uh -huh. Not only can I see what you can't see, but I can look back as clear as you can. Look back at the comps. This is the perfect guy for this situation. Just because your ball does not make you a bald eagle, Marcel. <laughs> um, so look, weird. here is why I, I, I'm a skeptic of this hire. Oh, don't do it. We have no reason to like it. We have no reason to like championship it. Championship coach? Great. Think about this. You, let me, let's start there. Let's start there with the championship coach. There is a LeBron James effect, which we know. Yeah. Wherever LeBron goes, his team wins, which means it has nothing to do with they do. The win what? Level of win is up for debate, oh. but they win. Oh, right? win. Regular season. Correct. Game. Whatever. Yeah. Level of win is up Not for debate. LeBron goes to the Cavs with Mike Brown early on in his career. Mm -hmm. Think about Mike Brown's winning percentage. Mike Brown's winning percentage with LeBron James, 66%. Mike Brown outside of LeBron James, 49%. Mm -hmm. Okay, you talk about Eric Spolstra, who we now deem as a great coach. I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Prior to this season, Eric Spolstra had five seasons without LeBron James after LeBron left. One playoff series win. Yeah. The four seasons with LeBron James before that, 14 se playoff series wins. Before LeBron James got to Miami, Spolster was still there. Hadn't been to the playoffs in two years. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we now acclaim Eric Spolster as a great coach. But without LeBron James, Eric Spolster, one playoff win in five years. Okay, let's you're not talk. You're not, you're not, this year? Oh, I'm saying prior to the season. Uh, okay, Even okay. with the season, you give me three. Uh, Eric Spolstra. Just add him up. Great. Okay, Eric Spolstra. Okay. Four playoff series wins yes. in six years without Sound LeBron. better than one. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Sure. Now let's talk T. Lou. Oh, don't do Ty, that. Ty Lou. Yes, he won the chip in 2016 with LeBron. But here's my question, Marcellus. If Kyrie and K-Love don't get hurt in 15... Ty Lue's probably never a head coach. David Platt got fired in the middle of 2016, yeah, yeah. and they were 30 and 11. Mm -hmm. Ty Lue takes over, and they go 27 and 14. So, really, Ty Lue had a worse record than David Platt did. Don't do that. They he won did. The championship. He did. But they, they won, won the. But they, <laughs> you know you're wrong. No, I'm not, because here's why I'm not. What happened after that? If K Love and Kyrie don't get hurt, we literally have the evidence to say they would have won. Because when Kyrie and K-Love were hurt the next year, they did win. Yeah, but the standards are absurd when it comes to Ty Lue in terms of the next two years after that 50-plus wins. <clears throat> and then, 0-6, oh you got to go. Got to go. And, I mean, if the standard is win it all or not, then no coach is really going to be held up to that standard mm -hmm. and succeed. But if it's just to change the culture. And this team is built to win right now. Yep. And Ty Lue has been in a position before with the gun to his head to win right then. And he did it. So I think that's the only guy you can Here's, here's my issue. I, I'm a skeptic of Marcellus coaches who have optimal success when they have the groats. 
goat. For example, or like Phil Jackson. No, 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 because Phil Jackson... He always had a goat. Phil ja- yes, but Phil Jackson had a goat before we knew he was a goat. Remember, Phil Jackson went Kobe early on in Kobe's career. Now, but let me talk Jordan, about this. You don't want to count Jordan? No, but, Phil, but Jordan started winning titles when Phil Jackson arrived. Yeah, yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? No. Like, LeBron James had won titles before Ty Lue got there. Uh, uh, Miami. Okay, okay. Like, you okay. see, like, LeBron, that's had, LeBron was winning. My, that's kind of making my Here, point. Here's a question I have for you, because now it's more of a conversation than a debate. Do you not have the fear of... Was he actually a good coach, or did LeBron make him a good coach? I'm linking football parallel. Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy won a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. We know that. But without Aaron Rodgers, even in Dallas, Mike McCarthy hasn't looked like the guy. When Aaron Rodgers was hurt, even in Green Bay, Mike McCarthy didn't look like the guy. So maybe Aaron Rodgers made Mike McCarthy. That's my question with maybe LeBron made Ty As soon as I entertain that thought, I always get down that slippery slope and I reverse Which is what? Because I start thinking of Phil Jackson. How many did you win without the greats? Uh, As I start thinking of Belichick, how many you won without Brady? Like, I just don't go down there because I can never have an answer that suffices. Wouldn't you say, though... That, and this is off topic, but I think this is actually in- interesting. Wouldn't you say that Phil Jackson made the greats the greats, as opposed to LeBron James is making the coaches? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's certainly a conversation that I entertain, and then I push back on that same conversation because I look at the field. Mm-hmm. So now where are you talking about? A Jeff Van Gundy in that situation? He's returning, it looks like, to back to Houston, where he was fired from Houston. So... In terms of options, I don't know where you can go outside of a Ty Lue who has least been in this situation before and succeeded with a top player. We're, we're bringing in right now our guy Slick Rick the Buker. So Slick Rick, what name is that? You <laughs> like the Clippers hired Ty Lue as their head coach? I do like it, largely because yes. Jerry West likes it. And he is an advisor to the Clippers And while his draft uh, record isn't exactly pristine, Hmm. his ability to to tag the the appropriate management and coaching choices is. Keep in mind, he played this exact same role with the Golden State Warriors and advised them that Bob Meyer should be the GM and Steve Kerr should be the head coach. He had a big part in seeing that happen, and we know how that turned out. He also tabbed uh, David Griffin at one point, and while it wasn't for the Cleveland Cavaliers, he wanted him very much in Memphis, and we've seen what David Griffin did. David Griffin happened to preside over that championship in Cleveland as well as the GM. So what I appreciate about this is, as you mentioned, Marcellus, Jeff Van Gundy was in the mix, Mm. and that was the guy that Steve Ballmer was looking at, and He gave in to his basketball people. He gave in to the guy who has done this. And that's what I like about it. We're ultimately, we don't know, because there is the question. Ty Lue was right there next to Doc Rivers when we had the meltdown this year. So why didn't he influence things this time around? That was the question in Steve Ballmer's mind, and that's why I believe it took so long for them to come to this decision. But ultimately... As you also noted, Marcellus, Mm. it's a matter of what your options are. And you've got to be able to convince uh, Kawhi Leonard, who already has a ring, and Paul George, that this is a guy that can show them how to get there. And among all the guys in the field, Greg Popovich isn't, isn't moving and rejoining with Kawhi in L.A. Bill Jackson's not coming out of retirement. Ty Lue's the one candidate out there who says, I have a ring and I know how to get there. Now, Slick. And that at least gives him that cachet in the locker room with Kawhi and PG. Slick, I'm going to ask you, though, sir, to think for yourself. Jerry West ain't up here. We ain't paying Jerry West to talk. So I don't want your primary argument to be, Mm -hmm. I like it because Jerry West likes it. You, Slick, got to tell me if outside of Jerry West's stamp of approval, because we've seen other coaches, we've seen players give coaches stamps of approval that are underqualified, cough, Peyton Manning, Adam Gase. I want to hear you tell me, Slick, why Ty Lue is the guy for the job, because I don't know if Ty Lue is good outside of LeBron James. Right. Well, look, but don't take away the fact that he was able to manage uh, LeBron James. He was able to convince LeBron James that this is the way we need to do things. That had to be a mutual respect thing. And he was able to earn that. So if he could earn that with LeBron, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we were talking about Kawhi Leonard being the new LeBron James, Mm -hmm. that he was the best player in the league. You still have to be able to manage that and manage the 
authority with a guy who, let's face it, has more power than you do. <clears throat> LeBron James was the most powerful entity in Cleveland. Kawhi Leonard is the most powerful entity with the Clippers. So Ty Lu has demonstrated that he knows how to enjoin his superstar and make things work. He, he got the stamp of approval, not just from Jerry West. He got it from LeBron James. And ultimately, we'll see if this works. I, I feel as if you can't just stop with the coach. That wasn't the only problem. You're going to have to do some reparations with the roster as well. You're going to have to make some changes. But here's the most powerful thing. <laughs> Doc Rivers has a history now of blowing 3-1 leads. Yeah, bro. Tyron Lue can walk in and go, you know what? I know how to come back from 3-1 deficits. That's fair. And that That's is fair. a powerful thing to be able to say walking into that locker room. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I look at the Civil War that occurred on the Clippers roster. Everyone's heard about the personality differences and the different treatment between the old guard with Lou Will and Trez and those guys and then Kawhi and PG come in and just get the red carpet treatment and how Doc Rivers didn't manage that situation perfectly. Well, think about how LeBron came back to Cleveland and then he was with Kyrie and then that situation, whatever you want to say about it, it was managed well enough to win a championship and to go on to 250-plus win seasons. And we see how Kyrie can be, ornery can be a little difficult, as well as LeBron at times could be difficult, but they work together well under Ty Lu. So that is a respect. But I don't want Acho to be allowed to kind of change the burden of proof in this situation. We have never seen Ty Lu coach a team yeah. as the head coach without LeBron James. But then you ask and you challenge people to show how he's a great coach without LeBron James. It's impossible. That's happening a lot in our society, if you guys catch the flip. It used to be the burden of proof was on you as the accuser to say, hey, guess what? This happened. But we flipped that. Now it's on the one who's being accused that they got to show that I have done nothing. And you're up here right now asking Ty Lue to prove to everybody he can coach without <laughs> LeBron James, and he has never been allowed to coach without LeBron James. That's a little message from y'all from society. I will, I will say this. It's not that I don't think Ty Lue is a guy for the job. I'm just not sure that he is because I have nothing to judge it off of. What I do know is, to me, what stuck out most about Ty Lue was the story uh, down 3-1 against Golden State. In the Oracle, he leaves the money in the, top of the, in the top of the locker room and says, we will come back and we will get this. That means they would have to go win game five knowing that they would come back to take game six or rather go win game six knowing they have to come back to take game seven. What they said, though, is Ty Lue actually got that from Doc Rivers. So we will once again see if the understudy can outdo the teacher. Mm -hmm.